Welcome back to another clay video. Today, we are going to create the world map from Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. Let's begin with the paper printout. This is always extremely helpful to make sure that everything is created at the right size and put into the right positions. Taking some blue and white clay, we can mix them together very slightly so we still have all of these swirls in it. And I think this looks really nice for the water layer. And I usually like to cut out the water to be a bit bigger than the paper cutout. I think it makes everything look a little bit less crammed. Let's get that onto the baking tray and we can start cutting out the islands. Just like Mario Land 2, this game is on the Game Boy, so it's not in full color which means we don't really know what the colored map would have looked like. There is some references we can go off of, like the box art from the game, and I imagine this is what they used as a starting point to create this colored map. The one that I'm using is just a fan art that I found on Google, and it seemed to be a pretty good match for the box art from the game. After we remove this excess clay, we can work on the right side of the island, since this is raised up a little bit higher. We need to cut out a second layer. Let's get that onto the map, and this seems to be a perfect match, so let's blend it together with the modeling tool, so we can remove all of the seams in it. And we have this pond at the top. So we can start removing that using the knife. First we will trace it out, and then we can dig out all of the extra clay using this knife. Taking the ball tool, we can make everything nice and smooth, and this makes everything look a lot more clean. On the left side of the island, we have some more water to cut out, and we can also trace out these little rivers. And this area in the center here I'm cutting out is actually going to be one of the worlds we will create. This may be very obvious to some people, but somehow I never noticed that this map is actually a pirate skull. After creating it, it seems very obvious, and I don't know how I never noticed that. Using our paper cutout again, we can make sure that everything is in the right place. Moving on, we will start creating the grass. And this is created with the paper cutouts exactly the same as the islands. And by doing this, we make sure that the grass is the exact same shape and size as the island. We have some grass on all of these smaller islands here. And moving back on to the main island, some of these pieces of grass don't really perfectly fit onto the map. So we can use the modeling tool to shape them a little bit, and after we make the water into the ponds, you won't really be able to notice that it doesn't perfectly fit. We need to trim this a little bit here, it got a little bit too long. And we can start creating the ponds. This is some of the leftover water that I had from creating the base, so it already had all of the nice swirls mixed into it. Using some worms of clay, we can start creating the streams. And we'll add in a little bit of extra detail at the bottom of the streams using a pretty cool blending technique. Some spots of the stream I dug out a little deeper than others, so we have to add a bunch of different layers of these worms. This is the blending technique to make it look like the waterfall is crashing down into the ocean. And that's a little bit too much, so let's add a little bit more of the darker blue into it. And I think this looks really nice. So let's move on to the other waterfall here. And now we have just this tiny little island here. And we can begin creating the beach. This is a very simple area, but just like all the other areas, when you go into it in the game, it expands and there's a lot more detail in it. We have this little cave here. And we also have a small cave here to get down to the ship. We have some rocks, 
and we'll be adding more of these rocks into other places in the map after we get done with some more details. We have these little lumps, very, very iconic for Mario games. Moving back to a lighter shade of green, we will create Mount Teapot. This island is called Kitchen Island, so all of the different things on here are themed to different foods or different items in the kitchen. So this mountain looks just like a teapot. We have the little spout right here. We can attach that on. I've mixed together gray with this main teapot color, and this will be to create all of the extra details on here. Sort of makes it look like a cactus. But these are actually the trees. You can see this much better once you get into the area. We also have them all over the back of it. And our teapot is complete. So let's create these little hills as well that have these lumps on them. And let's get those all onto the map. Now taking some more of the watercolor, we'll start adding this little stream in here. And with just a little bit of the lighter blue color, we can add in this crashing water effect. Now adding in the rest of the rocks. And we also have some on the upper part of the island. Taking these two different shades of brown, we can get this really, really cool swirl effect. And I think this is the coolest tree I've ever created with clay. This is the very tall tree that we see standing in the middle of the forest which is actually the Parsley Woods. We need to trim this down just a little bit since I think the branches were a little bit too thick. And let's throw this into the oven for five minutes just to get it a little bit hardened. The tree wouldn't stand up on its own, so I baked it for a few minutes first so we can stick it into the base. And it will get baked fully after we're done with the entire map. And we have the top of the tree here. And we have all of these little tree stumps to finish off the forest. We have a very small minecart track here, and you see much more of this minecart once you get into that world. Using a ton of balls of clay, we will create all of the treetops. And I really love this method of creating trees. I think that it really adds a lot of detail for the small amount of work it takes to roll out all of these balls of clay. Placing on the final tree, and we will move on to Stove Canyon. I'm not sure if this place is actually lava or just boiling water, but either way, it's very hot, so we're gonna go with some lava. And I thought it was pretty cool to add in some platforms in here, rather than just having it be a big open hole. Rolling some white clay into cones, we can create Sherbert Land. And when you go to this world, you actually go inside of all these ice chunks. Now we need to create a bridge so you can get over to this world. So we'll create a basic wooden bridge and putting that onto the map and we can move on to creating the SS Teacup. This is the pirate ship you can see in the front of the map. Now we have this basic outline around the top of it and I wanted to add an extra little line going around the ship just to add some more detail. Now we have the anchor. Using a lighter brown, we can create the base for the mast. And on top of the mast, we will have some sails, but we'll do this after baking, because I want to try using some cloth for it. This will be the crow's nest, we'll glue that on after we bake it. I also forgot to put this asparagus in the water. Now we can move on to the most detailed part of the map, Syrup Castle. Now we're gonna take some pink clay for this. This is the skull we are going to be creating. We have to hollow out a couple different areas on here and we'll fill those in with some black clay. This is the nose. And we have the eyes. So let's fill everything in using the black. And just like creating faces, the dotting tool is very, very useful. I know I didn't really create this skull to look quite as menacing as the real one in the game, but I've never made a skull before, so I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. We have all these spikes on the top of it, and a 
couple more on the side, and we can get this into place on top of the tower. And we have a couple white spikes. Moving on to the final detail before baking, we have the lid for the teapot. This can be seen hovering in the air, so we'll do that using a wire. We have a pirate skull on here, and we also have maybe two eyeballs? I'm not really sure what this detail is. And we are ready to get baked. After baking, we can use a thumbtack, and this will be to make the hole inside of the mountain and the lid. And we can secure a wire between the two of them, and that looks pretty awesome floating above the mountain. So let's move on to the ship. I have this bandana material I found, and I think this will work pretty good for the sails. So let's cut out the shape we need for the sails, and using some super glue, we can attach it onto the ship. And we can't forget about the crow's nest on top. For the final detail, we have this little flag. And here it is! The world map from Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. I hope you all enjoyed the creation of Kitchen Island from Wario Land. If you want to see some more Mario maps I've created, you can see a playlist up here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.